Hello everybody, welcome back to the Agostino Zinger Show with me, your host, Agostino Zinger. This is episode number 197, 197, uno nueve sete, or something like that, right? I think so, something along those lines. How are you doing? How are you feeling, mother? Hope you guys are well, rested, hydrated, chilled out and stuff. I'm here somewhere in the depths of East London. Not going to give away my specific that, um, location, but those of you that are familiar, you'll know where I'm based. As you can see from that side of the window, there's nice light shining in this morning. From this side of the window, there isn't because there isn't a window here. It's just a kitchen all built into one big living room, hence why I'm living in a dilapidated flat somewhere in East London. But that is not, neither the point of what I'm trying to say. I'm trying to say good morning. Good afternoon, good evening, wherever you may be, and how are you guys doing today? Good, good to hear. I'm fine, I'm great actually, because I'm staring at this too much. I'm feeling good, I've just woken up, or I've, oh, I've been awake for a while now, maybe a few hours. Um, You know, it's good to get up really early in the morning, like to get the day started off really well. And I got a little bit of a jolt of energy coming back from the gym this morning. I decided to go on my podcast app, have a little browse, and see what new podcast dropped. And guess what? An amazing podcast episode just got released now. Joe Rogan interviewing Laird Hamilton. Laird Hamilton is a, is a really well-known American surfer, big wave surfer for that extent, married to the very inspirational Gabby Reese, a former gold medal Olympian for the United States too. So an absolute beast of a couple. But Laird Hamilton is known for being an absolute beast when it comes to just working out, keeping fit and doing all the right things in terms of living. They live in Hawaii. They have their own superfood, coffee creamer they make. They post amazing workouts online with their program called XPT Life, which they do in collaboration with somebody that I know, what's Slim Robbie's a little bit, someone that I know, which you guys will be familiar too because I've spoken about him a lot. They do this XPT Life thing with this dude here, Brian McKenzie, right? He, this, this guy who wrote this book is a part of XPT Life as well, and he helps them out with the programming. So, um, Leonard Hamilton was just recently on Joe Rogan, basically the other day, and it's a, I'm just listening to the first half an hour already, and I'm already, you know, I'm already um, buying his creamer, I'm starting to nose breathe, I'm just trying to absorb everything that he's basically saying, because he knows exactly what he's talking about. But I just love how um, amazing of an era we're living in now, where I can watch an episode like that, right, I can watch something like that and get so inspired and feel like I need to go go out and start running, go out and start doing my own thing, like I feel fucking, you know, really, really fired up. So I really recommend you check it out if you're into the health and fitness thing, because it's really good, because in the, in, in the, in the sense that it kind of highlights somebody who's, you know, he's he's in his mid fifties, late yeah, mid fifties, late fifties, I think sixty five, something along those lines, right? Obviously, he's been a bit of a career athlete, so he's maybe coming from a different base than most people are coming from. But it's something very admirable about somebody that age still going as hard as he's going, right? Sitting in the sauna at ridiculous temperatures um, for a long period of time, sitting in an ice, sitting in an ice, basically freezer or machine for the most part. Let these muscles recover that way, running marathons, uh, surfing nearly every day, working out, swimming like an absolute animal when it comes to working out. So I recommend really you check it out. It's a very inspirational podcast and something I'm sure will get you fired up the right way. Not like inspirational, like, oh, man, I feel like doing something. No, fired up the right way in terms of just consistently doing something, exerting some kind of strain on your body because, you know, life is already too easy as it is. We all have one of these in our hands. We're all kind of just moping around, posting on social, trying to find the right meme to get us the most retweets you know that kind of dumb silly stuff but what you should be doing actually is stressing and straining our body so that we can become optimal optimal just imagine the amount of just imagine how great your means would be if you just you know exhausted your body for an hour or two in the morning right and really got the blood flowing and got the endorphins going right and then you started going into making your memes you'll be so clear-headed you'd be like okay now i get what i have to do right you'd be on it you'd know exactly what to do so yeah i really recommend you check it out talking about working out i just got back from the gym did a really big pump loads of big heavy deadlifts i shouldn't turn this camera down a little bit because it's a bit low yeah that way right loads of big heavy deadlifts um i did yeah i did some really big heavy overhead presses i did a big deadlift i think i did about 120 kg on that one right or 100 kg for reps as well which is quite good i'm feeling nice and that uh, bench press i'm slowly starting to get up it's not as high as i should be i think it's like 50 kg so i need to really ramp up and get up next to or at least near to where my bench and back squat is back squats i've been kind of leaving to one side because my ankle mobility isn't where it should be where every time i squat my kind of heels come off the ground which is not the best way to do it so I'm, I'm kind of avoiding doing them and if i do do it i just kind of put some plates under my heels to make sure i can squat with my ass to the that ass to the ground ass to the ground but this year i need to like like a lot of things right i need to learn the language i need to do this i need to do that but my biggest really um, ambition this year is to somehow engineer a way 
that I'm able to do a squat, an air squat without my heels coming off the ground. Like, you know, like Asian people um, where they sit, you know, if you go to Far East, Southeast Asia, you'd see a lot of dudes outside the, sh- outside the shop, sometimes women in markets uh, squatting with their ass to the, or with their, um, with their ass to the heels, right? Squatting really low. Um, feet usually pointing straight great mobility right it's amazing for your mobility obviously for the most part because you know in those kind of southeast asian countries everyone usually sleeps on the floor or with a thin mattress on the floor so they always having to get up and down so that kind of squat mobility is kind of birthed in you from it's kind of ingrained in you from birth um but obviously in the uk we don't really have that most of our bedrooms are like you know we have a, a fucking bedding that's like up to about here or some shit right so you're climbing into it and climbing off so you're not really you know you're not really um um getting them as much mobility in your dress as you should do but i've always admired that seeing those guys and girls and all those guys and girls in southeast asia i can do that because i thought fuck that's amazing and then when you look back in the history of it you'll find out that squatting like that was part of our was part of our makeup as mankind right that's how we um rested when we didn't have a seat we'd rest during a hunt we'd rest when we're just chilling talking to our friends we just sit down and that's how something we played games that way you know squatting in that kind of fashion but think about it now imagine imagine how long how long do you think you could do even for people that can air squat how long can you actually do it right like with enjoyment it's good your, your legs are gonna start before your legs start shaking so i want to really do that this year but you know again loads of things to add to the list things i need to write down as well i think this this is the year of writing things down and not just saying them out loud because when you say them doesn't really have the same amount of weight as writing it down i know for me when i go in shopping to buy my weekly food stuff and i you know make a note on my uh, iphone notes app and make a little list of the items i'm going to buy it's very red i forget it right but when i have that mental idea of okay well, i know i'm gonna buy i know i'm gonna buy i just keep it in my head it's inevitable i get there and i'm like and then i you know buy my shit go to self checkout thing and it's you know uh, and a whole, a whole exercise to get that working and then you finally pop out and you're on, on the bus or walking home and you're like shit forgot the olive oil do you know what I mean it's a super crucial thing that you thought you had in your bag but you don't and it's like oh and you're already like halfway home so it's like annoying as fuck so i know the i know the importance of writing just from that little small example um so i can only imagine how much benefit it would have if i applied it to my actual goals and stuff but you know that's something i'm going to explore in my own time um what else has been happening with me djing loads um not going out as much i went to actual no saying not not talking about going out as much i went to mix garage the other day um what who did i go see at mix garage let me see if i can pop it up here on my list i went to mix to go see on the on the 18th right yes it's the 18th Uh, let me see if I can see the date here. Yeah, I went to Mixed Galleries the other day to go see, uh, for the night origin, to go see more Alien and Bakar and Baker or Bakar Summer Day and Night Party. They started from free and ended really late at night. It was a pretty good party, to be honest. Again, just a real big prop up and shout out to um, Mix in general. Um, there's not a, I've, I think in the last few years, for me personally, I used to, again, I think as most people in the kind of, you know, electronic um, scene, or maybe, yeah, maybe electronic music scene for the most part. We all used to congregate around East London, the trendy East, right? Shoreditch, Dawson, all those kind of places. And those that, that's what, that was our kind of zone. But then I think with the Hackney licensing laws, they clamped down on all the clubs and bars in that area because you know, residents, residents had like, you know, um, legitimate grievances for the noise pollution that was coming out uh, of the clubs, for the just the, the general antisocial behavior of some of the punters out there. Because unfortunately, having a nightclub in Dawson is great for foot traffic, but then you invite a whole score of randoms, right? People just out for a night out, just end up kind of turning up to your club night that you've put a lot of care and attention into. So you get like a really weird mix of people in there, right? You get people out there for the music and there people there to pick up, people there just to, you know, hit on girls or boys, people there just to like have a have a, have a a tear up. So it got a bit crazy. So I'm not, as I think in the beginning when all the hoopla was on social, people were like, oh my God, Hackney Council is shit. How can you not let the clubs, the clubs were there before the houses? Uh, no, the cubs were there before these trend, uh, the new build houses, not the residential, but the new build houses, blah, blah, blah. I was a bit sympathetic of the residents because when you read some of the residents' accounts of them coming out of their house on, on a Saturday morning, going to do their Saturday afternoon shopping and shit and walking into this vomit or walking into a staircase full of just um, a, the aroma of urine and shit, it's, it's not something that you'd like to hear, right? Um, so over time, it's, there's been a bit of a lull. There's a bit of a lull in that kind of period of those clubs closing. It felt like a little bit of a dead period. In that middle bit, then I started going to like a lot of those um, uh, don't what what are they called? I forgot the name of it. The people that put on parties in the forest and they put some parties in warehouses. They moved them around. I forgot their names anyway. But a lot of those kind of like pop up warehouse parties started popping up, right? 
uh, no pun intended, in that kind of interim stage. So I decided to go to a few of them, but again, the crowd there is a bit weird. It requires you to get really on it and to go really hard because it's hard to kind of stay out at that kind of time and just enjoy the music. It's a bit, it's a little bit, you know, it's a little bit messy for my, for my taste personally. Um, and again, you know, comparing it to a Berlin, it just isn't as polished as you'd want it to be, right? Which is the whole point of it because it's done, you know, quite, it's done by a, a real small group of people. They try and get the things up and down really quickly. They try and make it safe as possible. They try and make it the music diverse. I don't know. They, they try their best of what they can do. So eventually, you know, I kind of like pull, uh, put my foot off the pedal of that. And plus, in general, just taking over too much of my life going into those kind of things because, you know, essentially it will turn into like a four day weekend. Right. So um, I kind of stopped doing those things. I was like, you know what? I, really, I do need a clubbing experience. I really want to go and see good DJs play. You know, being a DJ myself, um, I want to see what the best people are doing. I want to go and see what the best promoters are doing in terms of party wise. I, I want to go see what, what the levels are because I think in general, sometimes when you're when you're like a DJ in a bar or a club and you have aspirations to kind of, you know, move up the ladder, become a touring act, whatever, you can sometimes get a little bit delusional about where you are really levels wise, but it's nice to kind of go to these nightclubs, go and, in, um, go and see somebody put that's professional, a professional do their job. It can also give you motivation, inspiration for the stuff that you're doing, but also can kind of settle your ambition just a tiny bit. So you don't get a little bit big for your breach. Like, okay, cool. There's levels to this shit. So in effort to find those kind of things, there's a bit of a lull, but then it seems like over the last few years or maybe in the last few months, sorry, Places like Hackney Wick have really kind of um, propped up the scene again, right? They've become my de facto place to kind of go out on a night out. And of course, it helps because for the most part, um, I'm always DJing in Westfield in Stratford, right? So on Fridays and usually in Leighton Stone on Saturdays. So it's a bit easier for me to get to Hackney Wick than it would be to get to Dawson, right? In terms of a distance wise, in terms of coming back, I can come back. I can get there in half an hour walking. I can come back half an hour walking um, from both di- from both distances, I think, for the most part, right? From Stratford and from um, Leighton Stone. But then, um, weirdly enough, um, it kind of coincided with these clubs kind of propping up the Hackney Wick clubs and also the the promoters really putting on really amazing parties. I went to a drag night um, the other day at the yard called um, Clown Something. I forgot the name of it. And then I went to this thing in Mixed Garage the other day too, um, the night called Oranges, which I'm always, a, which I've kind of gone to a few of them. I've been to the one with um, Dr. Rubenstein and Roy Perez, which was fucking phenomenal. I went to the one with Steffi. I've been to this one. I've been to quite a few. I, I think maybe that might be free. I've been, but I've, I'm always keeping an eye out for their nights because they tend to put on some really good artists or people that I'd want to go see. So in general, just, you know, just killer people in general. So um, I just want to give a big shout out to them and what they do because, again, I just think in an era where people are complaining about no places to be in terms of going out wise in the night and, you know, it's hard to kind of go places and really feel like you're in a safe environment in a place that you're going to hear good music, in a place where the sound system is great, great bartenders and stuff. It's good to kind of go to a bar where it's a fairly simple layout. You know, they've got um, massive metal shutters that you kind of go through after you've been searched by security. There's a girl at the front or guy at the front, whoever kind of scans your ticket. Um, as soon as you walk in, you know, the sound is blaring in front of you. There's all these massive beer um, kegs uh, stacked up behind the DJ booth. You walk into the mass, uh, kind of like a square dance floor for the most part. And one bar kind of facing the DJ booth, a, re- a fairly um, small kind of simple bar with about five or six bartenders in. And no matter how busy it looks, you, you tend to get served really quickly. Like they're super quick in terms of getting you served. They have a massive, they have like a little small, nice little POS um, a machine that they use to tap uh, if you've got contact as payment, just a really easy way to do things. The beers are really tasty for the most part. Um, they tend to get quite warm because in there is fucking, especially when it's a good night, it's going off. Your By the time you get your beer in your hand, it's quite chill when you get in your hand. And by the time you kind of go to the dance floor, it's already turned into chocolate milk. So you have to kind of be quick in the, with, the, with, the, with the drinking. And then they've got like a great little outside bit um, where everyone tends to like, you know, congregate, um, share a cigarette, share some war stories of clubbing adventures they've had, bond, share some Facebook details. It was, it's always kind of a good vibe in a smoking area for the most part um and you get to get some nice fresh air and you get to come back in and have a dance again it ends at four so it's not like a crazy time to stay out especially in london maybe in that kind of area you don't need to go out to another house party you feel quite um done with it and you go home but again so i, so I just need to give a big shout out for them because they're again they t- they run that place really well for the most part, i haven't seen any trouble in there for the most part there might be some odd scallywags here and there the kind of dudes that you know that pickpocket your phones and stuff but for the most part everyone tends to look after each other i know i've done it before when i've been in there i've tend to kind of you know if i've seen especially girls around me who kind of like um will stand around especially if i'm in the corner where i like to stand next to the speakers they might put their bags down their benches and stuff and i'm always kind of reminding them hey keep an eye on your bag 
because uh, there's pickpockets around and stuff and they'll kind of you know uh kind of fix up and put their bags nearer to them but for the most part it's again one of my favorite venues um in london in hackney for the most part um mixed garage and next door the yard too for maybe a more of an alternative kind of um night they are i'm assuming yeah they are uh, mainly a queer um themed or centric um theater for the most part people say the theater shows are there really good i haven't been there but the club nights i've been to there have been good but yeah big shout out to mix and if you want to have a good techno inspired night out definitely keep an eye out for the night called origins they put on some amazing djs and i'm sure they'll have probably another night or two coming up very very soon um anyway um that's enough of the shout outs there let's get into some topics because that's what we're here for family all right topics time Got loads of things to drum on through that I've kind of seen here. Number one, Fenty is official. Fenty is official. Fenty is official. Are you ready for Fenty? Let's put it up on the screen. So Fenty, Rihanna's new um label that she's been slaving over has oh oh let's pause this uh, uh, that she's been slaving over and creating over the last few years has finally finally made an appearance and people are hyped i'm i know i'm hyped am um, are you hyped let's check out the video and see what she's doing because i haven't actually seen the video myself actually um let's see what it's all about i saw the pictures of her actually in the new york times magazine it looks fucking phenomenal and i was like whoa rihanna's fucking going for it so let's see what she has to say here let's put it up on there boom let's get up love the music already oh wow Love the backdrop. It reminds me again. I love the kind of um. That, who does that kind of background stuff? Um, Undercover does that quite often, right? Um, I think it's main, mainly. Is it a, is it a projection? I think it might be a projection. He has a sheet and they project like kind of you know scenarios behind the uh, the model. Um, so it might be like standing on the highway. It might be sitting down in the park somewhere. I quite like that kind of thing. It's a, it's a really good way to. Um, it's probably a great way to make a cheap. It's a great versatile way to make a, you know, a cheap versatile way to make like a, a really expressive kind of lookbook. But let's check it out. Oh, I love the shades. Okay, the shades are what I saw of her wearing before prior. Wow. Love it. Love the suit. Double breasted. Is that a sweat? Is that a jumpsuit there on the right? Yep. And what do we have here? Oh, I love that little denim suit there. I think that's a jumpsuit there. We've got a nice sort of dress there. I love that little bomber jacket with the skirt here as well. It'll, it'll probably be all women's i'm assuming right that probably makes more sense i'm doubt they're going to go into uh men's clothing there might be some stuff that is kind of like um gender neutral for the most part someone might be able to jump on but i like the heels as well the heels look amazing nice shoes but again it really matches up well with her overall style rana style in, in the main part look at me psycho analyzing a fucking 45 second clip but you know it's rihanna man you gotta do this shit oh all white looks as well me like me like me like Ah, uh, the earrings look amazing. What are those? They got a little clip over on the top. Maybe they clip into your top little thing there. I love that shirt again. Okay, nice. Oh, look at Rihanna styling it. Oh my god! <laughs> wow, that Rihanna styling it. Yeah, sick. Yo, if, if Rihanna turns into a fucking bona fide fashion designer. This is a, what a time we live in. If this happens to be the case, wow. Oh, I love her. I love her. Okay, cool. No, nice little set design change again. I love the glasses again. I love the top. This Oh, there's a guy there wearing a suit. Then, so, like I said, there might be some gender neutral bits and pieces floating out there. Fan of. The earrings look really great there. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. That blouse is amazing with the the... One with a shaved head there a little bit. Oh, I love the logo as well. Okay, definitely a uh, motorbike. You know, Rihanna loves a good motorbike. That might be a good way to actually bag Rihanna, you know, turn up in a fucking motorbike. She might she might be down or oh, not. Oh, I love the jacket Rihanna's actually wearing. That's fucking awesome. Oh, that's a that's a really famous hairstylist, right? I forgot his name, the guy with a beard. I forgot his name, though. Um, very famous hairstylist, right? Someone could remind me in the comments, probably. But yeah, the jacket Rihanna's wearing is not bad either. The Parker. Oh, is that the logo? Oh, Fenty, look at the logo! Look at the logo! Look at the logo! The logo is a win already. Get that on a hoodie, I'm wearing it. Get that on a fucking hoodie. Honestly, get that on a hoodie, I'm wearing it. Get that on the hoodie, and I'm wearing it. That looks fucking banging. Oh my god. Sure, okay, let's go again. Wow. 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 
That's Paris, right? Okay, wow. I'm game. I'm game. I'm game, man. I'm game. I'm in. I'm in. Fenty, take my money. Take my money. Number one, the glasses I'll probably end up buying. Number two, the uh, anything with a logo on it is something I'm going to get, whether it's hats, whether it's bags. I'm sure they're going to, you know, smash that shit. You know, if you're going to show a 45 minute clip, you know, no point showing logo to you. You're probably going to show stuff that you've actually cut and sewed and stuff. Great. It's going to be great to see the stuff that she makes because she's a real big fan of that kind of boxy, Vetterman, Balenciaga look. But she also wears very slinky, kind of Thierry Mugula, Moschino, um, whatever brand that she wears. I see sometimes other stuff anyway as well. So I'll go, I'm interested to see what the shapes are, shape-wise, what they kind of look like. Um, the glasses, of course, it, they look banging because I think she's got very, very good taste in sunglasses. Her and the styling team know what really accentuates her face and makes her look the way that she does. And yeah, I think it's going to be a win. I think K um, LVMH Group, is it LVMH Group, right? That put money behind her. I think they really the power of this woman like she's just another level of a uh, i think it's, she's up there or maybe a bit further along than maybe a kylie jenner kylie jenner maybe appeals to a more of a younger audience and maybe the look is a little bit more less premium right less luxury because i think she wears a lot of fashion over shit and i'm not sure i've seen rihanna wear fashion over she might have done it in the past for a brand collaboration but she always strikes me more as a person aspirational figure right if you're a if you're a girl that follows rihanna you kind of want to wear the stuff she wants to wear she wears one day whereas with, with whereas with kylie i always feel as if like um she wears what she wears in order for you to then go and get whatever you can get from your kind of price bracket for the most part right um unless she's wearing you know the lasagna shoes and handbags but you can kind of get that look for cheap if you want to because for the most part you know people the stores in general tend to copy what she wears and kind of iterate it out in cheaper materials but this Fenty collaboration looks fucking awesome i'm a fan of it wow 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 congratulations rihanna um that looks fucking banging and i can't wait to see it um on the runway really um it's gonna debut this season right i think so is it debuting this season should be debuting this season anyway but yeah it looks amazing fenty is official rihanna's stepping into the stepping into the ring and saying here here's my stuff right finally going from a consumer to a creator and, I, and that's always the best journey isn't it there was a point in time especially during the whole uh kanye era when he was first doing showing his show in the paris fashion week uh, runway wherever which is kind of you know um badly received by the critics but for us fans of design for us fans of getting your work out there for us fans of shipping for us fans of being true artists right because true artists don't just make true artists don't just pontificate true artists they actually they actually ship their items you know you can get it you can feel it you know mm -mm -mm. so what what i was more impressed about was Kanye's ability to actually get it done, right? He spent so many years complaining, right? I'm um, telling us how racist and how oppressive the whole fashion industry structure is. And, you know, to some extent, it really is in that way still too at the moment. You see the kind of unfair criticism of someone like a Virgil gets um, compared to like an Anthony Vaccarella or whatever, right? He spent most of his time copying or trying to emulate the past um, brilliance of uh, Heidi Slimane at St. Laurent, but no one sees the bat an eyelid. Uh, Virgil copies or it takes inspiration from a couple of designs. All of a sudden, he has to get cancelled. So you see the kind of disparity in some of the criticism in fashion, but it's kind of instead of just complaining about that stuff finally put his money where his mouth is literally right and got into massive amounts of debt if you believe what he says and decided to put on the fashion show by himself for the most part i think he funded it out of his own pocket which you know if you know anything about fashion shows you know that costs up to upwards of two hundred thousand um, pounds maybe even more millions when you include the production of the actual garments themselves um, some most of it didn't go into actual manufacturing but just the the exercise of oh no i'm gonna do it and he did it himself and it was fucking cool just to see it done right like, wow to see kanye come at the end of that runway was like brain it blew my mind it blew my mind same way like you know when i found out who oswald Bolton was for the first time right getting into fashion you're like shit the dude out here looks like and you forget how you forget how important that sort of thing is nowadays and imagine you're a kid now coming up and seeing someone like a rihanna you know having a runway show in paris right backed by lvmh group uh with the high levels of manufacturing that finished like as well as anything you'll see in selfridges um gr something that appeals to people like a, an amazing diverse um cast of models right new faces great makeup great hairstyling it's going to be like like there is no there's honestly no limits whereas beforehand you know the kind of whitewashing of the industry it was quite safe the same old names moving house to house now that injection of newness is kind of 
erupted not only in the kind of subculture of fashion because i think weirdly enough the subculture of fashion still wants the kind of craftsmanship the kind of old names to be in these houses they don't really want the likes of the heron Prestons, the matthew williams um whoever else you might name to be the kind of people that get propped up they'd rather it be their friends or people that they know or like really cross people which is kind of weird there's a little bit there's still a little bit of a of a ceiling there for the most part but imagine just just imagine the exercise in ability the exercise in um possibility just looking at that runway show at the end and seeing rihanna run out at the end of it like whoa that's major and i can't wait to see what she does really and i'm 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 i'm, I'm expecting big things in general because the makeup's been really successful she's kind of smashed that out of the park and it's going to be cool but i guess for people waiting for her album <sighs> you have to wait a bit longer sirs <laughs> it's not coming just yet um next on the list black girl's haircut now this is a, a pretty um sad story i didn't know this was true again you know being a guy and not being aware of these things just you know just being unaware of things because you know it doesn't necessarily affect you but there's this really sad story that i saw highlighted on bbc news and the headline reads as follows um how bored black women overcome sexual harassment right it's like what the fuck oh my god to click it and essentially it's like a group of what's that two four a group of six girls um i think a couple of them maybe put the exhibition on and it reads as follows: the decision for a woman to shave her hair isn't an easy one to make as well as having to overcome society stereotypes and ideals around femininity masculinity and sexuality many women also have to navigate being sexually harassed in a barber shop ruth um sotoye ruth sotoy sotoye sotoye yeah is a visual artist who created bald black girls exhibition to provide a space for people to share their experiences and again really interesting because i think if you're if you're a dude especially if you're a black dude and you've been to hood barber shops you just you'll know how thirsty those guys are in there for any kind of female attention any kind of female presence if any kind of silhouette of a woman walks by that shop, everyone's neck is fucking cranking out the window. And it's always really surprised me. I don't know if it's because of the hyper-masculinity of the actual room itself, right? Because, you know, you can't necessarily go into a barbershop and start talking about your anxiety or your depression, right? Everyone's going to laugh you at the shop. People are going to tell you to go work out or some shit. Um, so everyone's trying to outcome. Everyone's trying to outbro each other in there for the most part, right? Which is kind of nice, right? That's why you. Got, if you want to go for, if you're a dude and you want to go escape from the world and dabble into a bit of toxic masculinity, to toxic masculinity, go to a barbershop, right? Especially on a weekend, especially on a Friday. Uh, people are gonna start talking about, you know, whatever guys talk about, you know, beating their chest, laughing at everything. You know, it's just a really boisterous um, arena. But it's it's not conducive, I'd say, to women at all. I'd say for the most part. Anytime I've been in there, even if it's a lady barber. She's usually got some unwind attention, right? You guys are kind of, you know, coming onto her, always throwing it out sexual innuendos. If it's a lady that's cutting her hair, it's even worse. Sometimes even mums, mums taking their kids into into a barbershop, right, to go and get their hair cut, sometimes get unwanted attention. Mums, mums are getting sometimes, you know, harassed by the dudes in there. So imagine what it must be like for like a young girl. And I can only imagine, you know, for young girls going in there trying to get that kind of, you know, shaved head look, what it must be like trying to, you know, navigate that whole thing. You know, you look pretty. I don't know. It's just it's just annoying. I don't understand the whole idea behind it. And again, I didn't know it previously, but having read the text and having kind of seen a bit of the video, it kind of drummed home a little bit to me. Uh, but I'm going to play a little bit for you now and we'll kind of we'll comment on it together as we go. But here's a video. It's on BBC. I'll link it below in the show notes so you guys check out yourself. My first barber, just, yeah, it was really uncomfortable relationship. Constantly rejecting him, and being in a position where you have someone with really sharp utensils on your head, it's really hard um, how you even navigate rejection. Yeah, exactly. And it's a weird thing. Imagine, imagine, imagine being a dude, and and that's your thing. Imagine being a dude, and you think, you know, I don't know. Says, but I don't know. Again, I I don't like to judge too much, but. Because I know I've, I've, I've had my boneheaded era or my, my era where I was just like, you know, super horny all the time. But there must come a point where, especially when you're working, you're in a barber shop, you're trying to give someone a nice haircut. You want them to be a repeat customer. I don't know where, I don't know the, I don't, I don't get the logic of harassing a girl that you want to come back and get a haircut from you specifically again all the time. It, same way with a dude, right? I don't get the notion of behind taking a million breaks going on your phone eating some food just generally just being a shit um a barber doing the job well but at the end of, at the end of, um at the end of the day but you know taking just taking too long to get it done 
if you want me to come back. I'm not going to come back if you're taking that long. I'm just not. You're just taking the piss out of my life. You know, I've got things to do and you're just wasting time. And it's, oh, of course, in black barber shops, it's like a, it's a thing that you have to kind of accept. No, it's like a, it's like a, I don't know why it is. Um, I don't know why someone has to take a break in the middle of you cutting their hair and just answer their phone or start eating. It's a bit strange, but it's widely accepted. So I don't really understand the idea. And I guess that's why it's, it's, it makes sense why that boneheaded idea would make sense in the same way that it makes sense for a dude to go and try and harass a girl or try and pick her up when he's trying to get a haircut. And, you know, it's just, just if she says no, just leave her alone. And even if she is in you, like, I don't, I don't know that wall. Why do you want to break it? Like, I don't know. When I was in shops and stuff, you wouldn't try and get a girl's number that came into your store. She might try to get yours and you could give it to her if you wanted to. But, you know, it's just awkward because she says no, she comes back in again. What are you going to do? No? I don't know. Let's show the video. Let's continue. Yeah, she has to say. <laughs> Fucking hell. Like, Horrible. Bloody hell. Bloody hell. The experiences of low shaved and bald black women. Black women, our hair is highly politicized as our bodies. Our existence as black women is politics. I'd rather it not be, but this is what it is. Yeah. Like, let's talk about it. Let's lead into it. And let's do it on our own terms. I knew I wanted to shave my hair for a few months before I did it. People said all kind of things when it came to cutting my hair, especially the day I actually got my hair shaved. The men throughout the day mostly were just like, you know, does your husband know about this? Like, did you lose a vet to your brother? It's just hair, man. Like, Fuck it. Just more like, did you consult a man in your life? Yeah, it's really strange. Um, but again, if you watch that, if you watch that um, Chris Rock documentary about hair, black women, I forgot what it's called. It's a Chris Rock documentary. Is it a Chris Rock documentary? It must be, right? The one about relaxing your hair. It's an amazing documentary. Definitely recommend you check it out. There is a thing, I guess it, I guess most women have it too. I guess if you're, you know, by and large, if you're a woman and you shave your head, everyone's going to naturally think you're crazy, right? It's just, I don't know why that is. But nowadays, especially with the amount of crazy haircuts, like, it's just strange that a woman could get a mohawk or a mullet and no one's really going to bat an eyelid but the moment you cut the middle bit off all of a sudden it's a big deal i don't i usually never really understood that bit or have those kind of haircuts where you've got just the top bit kind of past um kind of you know gelled over and the entire size of shave but then just if you shave the top bit again you get that whiff off your head all of a sudden you look weird it's a very bizarre point of view and again the outright misogynist of like coming up to a girl and telling her oh does your husband know or something it's like what well, as if you need permission to cut your hair like come on really maybe i don't know you might want an assurance from your partner to say, like, oh, do you still think I look cute? Cool. If the person in your life, the love interest that you give a shit about, thinks you still look hot, then why does anyone else's opinion matter? And why should they even offer your opinion? But I guess, you know, what even me saying this is fucking stupid because, you know, the the, the, near, the mere nature of social media, of the internet at the moment now, is to offer your opinion when no one really wants to hear it for the most part. So, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't it's not that surprising that someone will say something to you out loud and say something to you like that about your hair, but, you know. Again, full of absolute wrong and I would actually say that to a woman, but anyway, we continue. Before you made this decision, it was just my yearning to find a, a community of women. Hello, awesome, man. Everyone's got great me. trims. More like advice on what I should do. One day I had a really Aww, nice bless them. And I tweeted and I was like, women who cut their hair, like, oh, what do you do when X, Y, and Z happens? And so many women were like, again that's the good thing about social media you know a lot of ills of social media i've said about and out there lately i've, I've said it many and many and many a time but okay. um i've been recently kind of i've made a jump over to twitter i haven't really been using instagram for the most part and i've really found that quite informative again i haven't got into the old toxic argument sort of stuff i kind of you know leave that to one side i kind of laugh from a distance i usually follow the right accounts so my you know my feed's quite you know balanced for the most part but what i do like about social media is this idea that you know if you're going through a really tough time if you're going through something that's really bugging you, if you want to seek some kind of assurance, if you want some just some moral support for the most part, reaching out to on people on social is quite good because in general, some, some usually there's someone out there going through the same experience as you. You're not usually alone. It's always like, you know, I, I relate it to family problems. Whenever you're growing up, especially when you're living at home, you always tend to think that, you know, you're going through the worst of it. Like, this is horrible. No one else lives like this. My mum is evil. I hate my dad. But then the older you get, the more, the more you get exposed to different people. You start to share childhood stories and experiences. You start to realize, whoa, 
my my childhood was a, a lot more tamer than anyone else's in this room, right? You start to think, okay, by comparison, my childhood wasn't that bad. We all have our own issues in our own little way. Um, so I guess that's the great thing about this girl's experience, right? She goes through a horrible experience of a dude that's a barber who's, you know, unwanted sexual advances are not making her feel comfortable to an extent where he starts to fuck up her hair because he feels like he's been rejected. I'm not sure what move that is. But again, that, that's, that's similar to dudes that try and draw a girl she says no, and then they say, "Oh, you're butters anyway." It's like, no, she isn't. She, you know, she isn't butters. You tried to, you know, you tried to get her number. You wanted to take her on a date. You wanted to kiss her. You wanted to sleep with. Her. You wanted, you wanted her, and now all of a sudden she says no. You, she's butters. Come on, it's a weird defense mechanism. Just take the L on the chin and keep it moving, man. It's like it's like losing a cup final and saying, "Oh, I didn't really want to win it anyway." It's like, mm, what? <laughs> Let's continue. How do I bring this offline? You know, it's a great idea for an exhibition, man. Awesome. Um, I went to a random barber's on my on my road, and this guy, with his child in the in it's a couple seats barbers. away, mm. saying, "Oh, so <laughs> so he's doing all oh, yeah, private English lessons." Or, you know, I'm trying to work on my English. Will you come come to my house? Come and teach me. <laughs> <laughs> I shouldn't be laughing, but mama mia, is there anything? Honestly, honestly, I, I, I'm just saying this because I'm one. I'm just saying this because I'm one. But is there anything? Is there anything that comes close to the creepiness of a black dude, especially a young single black dude, especially a black guy that has a kid, especially a black guy that has not turned that thing off in his head where he just he's hot, his dick is just on tur ten tur. Is there anything? more creepy than that it doesn't exist i don't think i've ever been to a barber in my life like i'm saying in my whole 31 years on this a on this fucking planet right where i haven't been in a barber where if a silhouette of a woman i'm telling you sometimes i've been in a barber shop right and i saw and i've been looking out the window myself just just like you know daydreaming and i haven't and i've just seen a silhouette like a fucking you know a sh rush by someone walking by and they still managed to with some sixth sense, like eyes behind the back of their head, they still managed to turn around. I was like, "How the fuck are you? How do? How do you even? How do you even know that? Somehow, what did her fragrance like sip through? You know, seep through the window and come hit your nose? Like it is? It's bizarre. It's bizarre to the tenth degree. I do never understand it ever in my life. And I'd love to know. I'd love to know the success rate of some of these guys. I'd love it. I'd love to know the success rate. Like how many girls are they approaching in a day? Like in terms of walking by, and how many actually stop by? Even stop and say hi. They get to exchange numbers. I'd love to know the percentage. I get. I would assume it's in the low one percent. Low one percent. The hit rate must be horrendous because most of these guys, as well, you know. Again, I'm no judge of physical appearance, but come on. You like, you know, some of them. Sometimes you're sitting at barber shop and you're like, really? You're you're gonna try and talk to her? You? You're like, really? Come on, guy, man. And guys are not like girls, right? Girls have a look. Girls have a more of a. Girls have a, which is a good thing because this is why girls are pretty and usually hot. Girls have a a heightened girls have a be girls have a better idea of what they look like no girls not delusion but girls rate themselves high more highly than guys do for the most part guys know where they sit in the hierarchy of attractiveness right that's why most guys kind of go to the gym because they know i can't improve this face so i'm gonna get funny and i'm gonna work out a lot right that's the only thing you can do right but with a girl you've got makeup you've got outfits you've got clothes and shapes and shit you can do stuff to kind of enhance your level so you kind of are deceptively hotter than what you really are but dudes for the most part know where they sit on the hierarchy so sometimes you look at a dude and you're like you know where you sit on this hierarchy you know you've got no business talking to this girl you know that for sure you know she's got no business talking to her no business and she knows you got no business talking to her too so you're doing this weird polite dance and she's like i want to get my hair cut and you're trying to say your best lines and shit it's like oh teach me english teach you english bruv Download Duolingo, man. What the fuck are you talking about? Get out of my face, man. Get in my haircut. Let me go home. <laughs> ah, the girl on the side. Shit, it's always fathers. That is horrible. How can it always be fathers? Why is it always fathers? Why is it always black fathers? So creepy, man. Oh, my God. It just doesn't turn off. I've got uncles, man. They just they don't turn that thing off. It just, it's always a... It's like, wow, wow. I pray to Lord Jesus Christ, man, that there comes a point where that thing in my head just turns off. I don't know why it happens, when it happens, essentially, but I pray as a young black man, fairly in shape, you know, um, fairly, you know, what you call it, um, 
because I guess you could turn it off by just like giving up, right? You could just go fat and then no one's gonna look at you anyway, so there's no point of having it on. But I pray just like in general, just be, just be a normal dude, man. Just don't creep, don't don't hit on girls. Just leave them alone. Leave them alone. Leave them alone. Leave them alone. Um, oh god, that's amazing. It's an absolutely amazing video. And you know, someone's got a, a blade close to your head. You're not trying to. You're not trying to talk wicked. So yeah. Just facing forward. Jesus Christ. And it was the most uncomfortable exchange. No one to take my number after. I'm like, bro, leave it alone. Oh, my so God. For me, it's like I had to change my barbers. Yeah. Um, it came to a point. Because every time I came, <laughs> he, would, he would whisper it. That's the thing. Because then it would always be packed. Although I had to get early stuff. He whispered like, yeah, can I get your number? Well, you know, well, <laughs> He was it. Hey girl, had a bouche. Hey girl, I know you want a number two on top. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah
new to this gym mm. thing, so I thought he would get, he would book appointments on okay, WhatsApp. Do you know what I'm yeah. saying? So I've done it. Calling me, telling me, face Wow. Face. What's going on here? I don't book appointments that I did. Wow. So I had to dodge the barber. I've moved barbers twice now. Like, it's just long. Just and it's hard to move barbers as well. I feel for them because I know for me as a dude, moving barbers is one of the most stressful experiences ever. Because, and again, I'm not that bothered about my hair, but I'm just I just don't want to waste money, right? So it's like you move to another barber, you're not sure if it's going to be good. You have to kind of go through the kind of steps. So the first two trims might be a bit shaky, so they get used to your hair, and then later on it kind of builds up. But then you don't have really the time to let it get. You don't have the time for him to get experience. And sometimes, like me, if you're if you're unfortunate, you might live in an area where all your barbershops are in a particular street where like where i live and they're all in a particular street that i tend to walk by every single day to get to the station imagine that so every day i'm walking past these barbershops that i've now suddenly ducked right because I, I don't think they cut good hair and they know i've ducked because they, they fucked up my hair it's a weird kind of vibe but imagine that for a girl imagine for a girl who's kind of ducked a barber because he's being creepy and you have to walk past it on your way to the bus station on your way to the train station sorry like <sighs> Mamma mia, man. More guys need to watch this video, honestly. <laughs> Where are you trying to get a go for a cut? Mm. Um, so I'm trying to find someone who just does their job. Exactly. Oh my God, that's me. Yeah. That's me. That's me. That's me too. I want someone that does their job. I want someone that's not going to eat chicken wings. Someone that's not going to be on their phone. Someone that isn't going to try and whistle at some 16-year-old walking down the street. Yes, yeah, 16. And this guy's a big man, probably plus 40 years old. I want someone who's just going to cut my hair. Cut my hair, please. Oh. oh god almighty my desire over the course of this year is to find a new barber I'm happy with you. in doing the project i found that quite a few women do want to be serviced by other wow. barbers um, just because of the unpleasant experiences they've had when they frequent in the female barber shop so many of the women were like i've never met so many other poor black women Amazing. a lot of them follow each other on instagram now and like have their own whatsapp groups and that's of, awesome like, it's creating a buzz you know and I god bless this woman man awesome to have just been like a connecting point for really. That is great, man. Awesome, awesome, awesome. That's fucking awesome. I really love the whole video. The whole exhibition is a great idea. Um, it's probably going to be, it's probably out somewhere right now and if you go to see it actually yourself. So yeah, I recommend you check it out. Bold Black Women. Is it called, what's the, what's the exhibition called? Bold, uh, bold Black Girl, sorry. Um, yeah, um, common experience with me with barbershops, man. Just an absolute terrible experience. Shitty service. And again, it's kind of ripe for a change. It's kind of ripe for change in general. Um, I get the idea of willing to be cut by a woman because you don't want the end present experience. But again, you know, I don't think that is essentially the answer. You want to have guys be well behaved, right? Because there's there's going to be more bar there's going to be more um, women. There's going to be more men barbershops and women barbershops in general, right? It's just, you know, you just, you know, just a matter of fact, you just, you just need more guys to be decent out there. Hopefully, um, guys will see this a video or see the exhibition and kind of, you know, circle out a little bit or the word will start reminating or kind of spreading through throughout the kind of Twitter conversation. Because that, that does quite a lot sometimes, the Twitter conversation where people kind of speak about things and people start to like take notice. Oh, shit, actually, that's, that's bad, isn't it? So I'm not going to do it again. Um, but yeah, man, the, 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 the long and heralded search I've had to try and find a barber that just does his job is just, it's been frightening, man. I've not had it in a while. A barber just does his job, lets me go. It's just like, it's, it's, it's very rare to find. Very, 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 very rare to find. Um, and if you do find it, hold on tight to that motherfucker. But yeah, I recommend you check it out. Again, I'll link the video in the show notes. You check out the Sport Black Girls. Probably the exhibition is going to be on still now at the moment, I'm assuming. Hence why they put the video out, right? It was released on the 20th of May. So yeah, it should be out still at the moment. But yeah, check it out. Google it. Find it. Find it. Find it. Anyway, what's next on this list here? Ba, 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 ba. Oh, Virgil Pioneer CDJs fucking beautiful now this the I, I mentioned these earlier in another video um i think i saw them first in virgil's coachella performance um the other well a few weeks ago um he was he did this amazing kind of rig like with loads of fucking equipment everywhere some bits i didn't even understand what they were but the main standout piece of the whole thing was he had um uh, an entire pioneer kind of dj setup um the cdjs and the and the mixer and they were completely transparent so kind of taking cues from, you know, his collaboration with, with Ramoa, maybe some cues from his collaboration with the Nike 10 in terms of like flipping everything inside out and outside in so you can see what the construction of it actually looks like. 
and just essentially just like showing the inner workings of it, right? Exposing what's in it, the things that we kind of always coveted. But there is something quite gorgeous, quite beautiful, quite awe-inspiring about seeing the CDJ set up transparent like this. And I think it's probably up there with maybe the best thing he's done. Um, and again, I'm not sure if they're going to make these because I think they've, they've said it's only part of an exhibition that um, Virgil's doing at the moment now at the Chicago Museum. Um, I think it's a retrospective of his work so far, kind of charting his whole like 20-year journey so far. There's a massive book out at the moment too with it, which I'm sure is sold out. I tried to buy it the other day, but I'm sure it's sold out. But um, this is kind of part of the exhibition to kind of you know as, as one and another piece to add to it so i'm not sure if they're going to sell it but i, I imagine it's kind of a testing period to see how much interest it will be from pioneer because it'll make more sense um but again it's so beautiful it's so fucking beautiful i i don't know i have no words to describe how hot and sexy and amazing this shit looks um so here's here's an article here from hype beast uh, pioneer dj and virgil Abra design transparency dj as a mixer for up, upcoming exhibition and just look how amazing that looks like just honestly look how amazing that looks so it's completely transparent casing, no logos, no lettering, no nothing on it. So usually if, if you've played on CJs, you know that the buttons have some text on them. Uh, the actual tra the case itself has text on it to kind of highlight what buttons it is you're using. But if you've ever been in a nightclub, if you've ever DJed out professionally, you'll know what generally each button does because you, you generally use the same functions all the time. Um, so yeah, you don't really need it for the most part. But as just a visual experiment, it looks fucking incredible. You have an inc all, all the transparent case, all the LEDs are Colored, obviously so you get the pop on them as you're playing the jog wheel lights up it's just in insane how that looks on a dj booth and again imagine the kind of visual aspect of it as you're dancing seeing that kind of all these lights kind of binging around as the dj is playing it looks fucking insane the mixer too looks probably the best i think of the two i probably like the mixer look how it looks transparent i just think there's something really robust about it, it looks like a motherboard right it's full of so many different i don't know bits and bobs of it i just love how it looks there and again just an incredible uh, creation overall um again i'm not sure if this is ever going to come out i hope it does and if it does actually end up coming out, the one thing I'm really hopeful for is that they decide to kind of iterate this and 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 make it into um, other pieces of con other pieces that they make in their Pioneer DJ line. Like I'd love to see this kind of iterate out to their controllers, right? Um, I'd love to maybe see Sennheiser take this inspiration and do it with their headphones because I've kind of done it similar with my headphone cable. My my uh, my my Sennheiser headphones, my HG twenty fives. I bought this replacement cable from Amazon, right? And I was like, you know, what would be quite cool if you could somehow get the casings replaced and have them be translucent too. That'd be super sick, right? You could probably make it yourself or get someone to make it for you, but that'd be quite cool to get like whatever these transparent translucent sort of wiring is and then make it the whole thing translucent. That would look quite amazing. But yeah, the whole thing looks great. It's probably going to be worth super bucks anyway when it comes out. So it's not something I'm probably going to be able to afford, but just as a visual experiment or visual reputation of, you know, again, just what you actually see or what you're doing when you're DJing. And sometimes, you know, when you're DJing, the lights or the CDJ kind of blinking when that track's about to end. Um, sometimes the loop uh, functions, the jog wheel, there's things you kind of intrinsically get when you're DJing that kind of like trigger something in you. So this, this is again, just trigger something in me that I want to just use straight away and kind of get on it. Like, yeah, it just looks fucking amazing. I love everything about it. This could kind of get get expanded onto C, um, USB drives. Um, loads of things could kind of go this kind of way. But yeah, I'd like to see him kind of iterate it out in the entire um, DJing arsenal, the, the entire DJ um, things they have out there. Even like the XDJ, right? The kind of one, the one, the one, uh, the all in one player. Um, the X is it XDJ, the XDJ RX something, right? They're kind of one, the all in one player with a little screen on it. Imagine that completely translucent. That looked fucking incredible if that came out. But yeah, I recommend you check it out. Um, it's on hype beast now at the moment. It's going to be part of the exhibition at um the uh, the Chicago Museum for during uh Virgil's show figures of speech, right? Yeah, the Chicago Temporary Museum. So I definitely recommend you check that out. Amazing, amazing, amazing piece of product design there that I'm really, really impressed with and hopeful that it will come out later. Um, what's next on here on this God forbidden list of mine? Da, 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 da. Sweden smoking ban. Yeah, this is an interesting one. I'm not sure how they're going to implement this, but I saw this article the other day on Twitter again, which is again one of my great resources in terms of news at the moment. But I saw this article that basically says Sweden wants to ban smoking outside. I was like, how are they going to how are they going to implement that? But this is an article here at the moment from the ANI, South Asia's leading multimedia news agency. I'm not sure why they're reporting on it, but nonetheless, doesn't matter. So here's the article. Um, Sweden set to ban outdoor smoking. 
Stockholm, Sweden, uh, May 19th. Sweden is set to ban outdoor smoking from July this year in a bid to prevent diseases associated with smoking and passive smoking, such as cancer, according to the Minister of Health and Social Affairs. The latest ban is, is a step forward to in achieving the Smoking Free Sweden 2025 goal. Wow, that's an ambitious goal. The initiative is aimed at reducing smoking to less than 5% of the population by 2025. And again, I don't know how much I, I, I'm in favour of um, government mandated forcing uh, stopping you to of doing something i think you know we're all grown-ups we're all adults here if people if if all the science out there all the research all the analysis and all the findings that we have on all the years of people dying from smoke related cancer illnesses or diseases if you still have if you still make the decision to go out there and buy a pack of cigarettes or to smoke you know it's on you really for the most part i don't think the government should step in and you know persuade people not to smoke again i think secondary smoke i'm not sure how um i'm not sure how um impactful that kind of stuff is for the most part you can avoid it you know just don't go around people that smoke for the most part you can avoid most of that thing but i just don't know how they're going to enforce the outside of the smoking area because you know you only walk around you have to walk around most of central london or you know parts of liverpool street and some of the financial districts to see you know tons of people outside buildings smoking right and usually they're the diehard people. They're the ones that would not stop regardless, right? Because they've kind of gone from smoking and smoking rooms. You remember we used to be at work and there'd be a smoking room. There'd be a room where people would actually go and smoke. Like insane in a building. Like it's insane how far we've kind of progressed. And now people kind of have to go outside. But the people that are smoking outside are the ones who will smoke regardless. Because they smoke, you know, come summer, come rain. They don't care. They're out there smoking, like shivering outside and shit. And, you know, sometimes they kind of, it's a big, it's a great, it's a, it's a big kind of social kind of thing too in office spaces and the time to kind of go out, get some fresh air because you're, you know, sat behind a desk for the most part. But yeah, again, I just think, you know, I'm not sure how much I'm agreeing with the government coming in, stepping in and telling you to smoke or not to smoke. But hey, it, it continues. Under the ban, smoking will not be allowed in outdoor serving areas at cafes and restaurants along with public playgrounds, bus shelters, train platforms, sports arenas, and entrances of civic buildings. Huh. Okay, so that's that, that's that, that's probably a quite a good way to stop smoking, uh, to stop smoking outside, because you can't stop smoking, someone smoking outside their own house, right? Or just in general on the street. But you can stop them from smoking at, in outdoor cafes, which people do a lot, especially in London. So if you're having a meal, you can, there is sometimes an area you can go to and have a smoking area. But, you know, if you're in, if you're outside smoking in front of a cafe, you're still going to get absorbed by that smoke, right? Um, you can't smoke um, in public playgrounds, which you shouldn't do anyway. If, who's, who's the psycho that decides to take their kids to the park and start smoking next to the swings? Who does that? Like, if you do that, you're a crappy parent. <laughs> um, bus shelters, that's a bit weird too. For the most part, you shouldn't do that because, you know, there's other people other pedestrians there that you know don't necessarily want to feel your smoking for the most part i think in london anyway we always have signs that tell people not to smoke um or at bus stops at train stations and things train platforms again you have to be psychotic to do that before you get into a train sports arenas that that goes without saying um and just the civic buildings which kind of rules out maybe a lot of kind of people that do smoke outside the office so they're gonna have to i don't know walk down the road and go to a local park which is fucking nuts. Which might be even as a vapes or e-cigarettes are also covered under the ban. Wow! So everything is getting it. Around eight, um, around eight million dollars have been allocated to Sweden's um public health agency for 2019 to run a national awareness campaign to implement the change in law. They will also extend the support to municipalities to implement the laws locally. The contribution to the voluntary sector is an important one. Uh, we need to have a community-based approach to ensure that the laws have an impact, but also because the long term we achieved the goal of the Tobacco Free Sweden 2025. Lena Halegren, the Minister of Health, um, broke out SCT, and most half the funding will be given to organizations that work prevalently to reduce tobacco use. Wow. It's a very ambitious target, and again, probably goes to show that it's Scandinavia that would be pushed for these kind of measures. But I just don't know how how happy I'd be if I was a Swedish Sweden Swedish native to be told by the government when and where I can smoke. Um, you know, I'll smoke where I want for the most part. Uh, I guess if you own your own home, you can smoke because you know if you're not if you have a landlord, landlords usually kind of um are against people smoking in their houses for the most you know for usual health and safety reason. You know, for the accident that you might end up lighting up the whole apartment. But I don't know, man. I don't know. If they're able to achieve that, that's a very, very amazing accomplishment for the most part. Um, it wouldn't probably go down too well here in the UK. There's still a big majority of people that still smoke now. Um, even There's people that have even gone as far as, you know, because cigarettes, pack of cigarettes have gone up a bit, a lot considerably over the last few years. You can't buy 10 packs anymore. You have to buy the 20 pack or 30 pack, I think. And the prices are um, kind of bumped up for that sake. And... Um, you can't, what's the other thing? Oh, so the price of Brampton, so people now are moving towards um, Rollies, right? So rolling their own tobacco. Um, 
or their own cigarettes for the most part. So people have been that dedicated to smoking that they've even made that jump, which is really, really strange. Um, but yeah, great to see from Sweden. An awesome initiative and hopefully it's something that they can implement going forward. They're going to be cashless and they're going to be tobacco free. It's going to be like living in a utopia, isn't it? A version of utopia for the most part. Let's move on to something else. Running off on the Ferrari. This is a funny one, isn't it? Some guy tried to jack a Ferrari he went on the test drive with. Obviously didn't take it. This donut here tried to jack a $2.2 million Ferrari um, during a test drive. And they released a picture of the guy. Obviously, it's a dude that looks like that. He's, wearing, he's going to try and run off with a Ferrari. Anyone that wears a polo top button up to the top with a suit jacket is definitely going to try and steal a Ferrari. This Ferrari looks fucking gorgeous, right? And someone tried to run away with it. Um, police in Germany have recovered a Ferrari worth millions that was stolen during a test drive on Monday and are on the lookout for the suspected thief. Look at that Ferrari. Wow. Uh, the man reportedly spent several weeks communicating with a classic car dealer in Dusseldorf before coming to the showroom to take the 90, 1985 228 GTO for a spin. That looks fucking gorgeous. Wow, wow, wow. Car design back then just looked something, something else, didn't it? Cars look like alien spaceships, man. Just look incredible. Like, look how cool that looks. You can't even, I'm not even a big car dude, but I know how sexy that looks, right? And that Porsche um, behind it as well doesn't look too bad. Uh, da, da, da. A salesman went with him. And w and when he got out of the car to take the car, to take over the wheel in nearby news, the customer pulled away at rapid pace. That's a fucking good trick, isn't it? Just about to go out, you're like, hey! jump back in. On Wednesday, police confirmed that the car had been recovered in the garage in the city of Grimvenborg on Tuesday, but did not reveal details of operation, according to NRZ. That's the dude that actually did it, right? Here, there's a picture of him. Uh, a photo of the alleged thief has been released, showing that what appears to be a middle-aged man with, sh with thinning hair and glasses. Ooh, they're, ca they're killing him. Ferrari only built... 227 examples of the car from 90 there's only 227 of them wow and it was once the fastest production car in the world the stolen car has was once owned by retired ferrari formula one racing driver eddie irvin as two 27 miles on the unlimited estimated to be worth 2.2 mil it's interesting right there's only 300 or 227 of them made and it's only worth 2.2 mil think about trainers like how much should yeah how much are those m m jordans worth the first ones the green ones, the Eminem Jordan 4. There are not that many made of them. Think of all the tier zero, the friends and family shoes out there. Are there any that are worth like close to 100,000? Probably not, right? I don't know. It feels like it should be worth more than 2.2 mil. Because you could still get like a brand new sports car, like a Bugatti. Isn't that like 1.8, right? It's, like, it's around that price, which is a brand new kind of you know, uh, uh, supercar, right? For the most part, right? Um, hmm. Interesting. I think it should be worth more than that. Maybe it should be worth around 10. I don't know. If it's 27, 227 of them made, right? I'm assuming most of them have got high mileages because, you know, these, these cars, these, these are not the kind of cars you will buy just to kind of have in your garage. You want to drive that around. I'd want to anyway. So it's interesting that there's only, yeah, but anyway, what do I know? But yeah, he got, he got caught, bruv. He got caught. Look at him there. Look at that. How do you imagine trying to jack a fucking $2.2 .2 million Ferrari in a town like Dusseldorf, right? In a city like Dusseldorf in, G in Germany. I'm sure there's not a lot of these cars going around. You know, if you do that maybe in Dubai or Monaco, people won't probably bat an eyelid if you drive and steal, not bat an eyelid, but you probably get away a lot easier doing that. But doing that in a town like, in a city like Dusseldorf, like people are going to spot you for a mile off. Like, hold on, that doesn't look like a Volvo. That's not a Toyota Purus. Like, what the fuck is that? But yeah. What an actual donut. That's when scams go wrong. He probably does this anyway. Is that like a vape in his hand? Of course he's got a fucking vape, isn't it? That's a fucking vape in his hand, isn't it? I'm sure that is a vape. Is that a vape? What do you say? He's got tits. He's wearing a polo under a suit jacket. He's got that kind of, you know, um, sun, sun uh, what do you call it? Sunbed tan. And looks like a vape in his hand. Looks like he's got one of those. You know, you know the vapes people have that's like a, it's like a fucking dildo, right? It's like... <laughs> So, you know, it's sucking on their phone. It's like fucking bizarre, man. Vaping life is fucking insane, man. You vape guys are fucking crackheads. But that's, a, that's for another day. <laughs> oh, anyway, this is the Agassi Nozinga Show episode number 197. Thanks so much for tuning in for today's show. As always, check out my site, agassinozinga.com, for more information regarding myself. Link if we should be found in the description or in the bio. If you're watching via YouTube, give me a like and subscribe. That is a good, good little help there. If you're listening via the podcast app, leave me a five-star review. And I'll see you guys again very soon for that episode of the show. Take care. Bye.